approaching. It's called Scrum Tags, and it's uh, technically quite complicated. That's why I made a video to explain it. Some of you maybe know it already. Anyway, that's what it does. example, I'll try to explain to you how it works. Okay, this is the music video consisting of the audio part symbolized by the waveform and the video part symbolized by the thumbnail video sequence. Okay, touch this. First it's analyzed to detect the beats to determine the tempo of the track. Then the whole track is split up into small notes of musically meaningful length. Quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th, and so forth. Using psychoacoustic techniques, the sound signatures of all snippets are calculated. The sound signature of each snippet is now shown, symbolized by a sound spectrum. Okay, touch this. Finally, all sound signatures are saved in the database. Okay. Now that the music videos I want to plant are analyzed, I can start to play with it. I'll sing, scream, and beatbox, and make all sorts of noises concrete poetry actually, to describe music I want to be reconstructed out of samples from the database. I'm sending a continuous audio stream to Scrabble text. For instance, <coughs> first for every snippet, <coughs> its sound signature is calculated. Then it's sent to the database that searches the most similar sound signature. So, we have a winner here, and there he is. Now this process of analyzing, retrieving, and playing happens continuously. It works in real time, and virtual means that I can vocally describe music I want to be constructed out of samples. And of course, also the video part of the original material is played. Just get straight to the point. Um, there's one thing where, like, um, theorists and in academia are really struggling with the question what sampling actually is. Uh, is it like citation or just reference? I have my own theory, uh, which is that sampling is working with concrete musical memories, and I have some reasons to believe that. Um, first, from own observation, like. Um, when I listen to music uh, over and over, the same rendition, let's say a record or on the radio, 
I have a very concrete memory of the music. I can remember the sound, the exact arrangement, whatever. Um, I don't have such concrete memories of music when I go to a concert and see a show just once. <clears throat> a week later, I can, I still know if I had lots of beers but just a few, and if it was good or not, or maybe the style of the music, but I can't really concretely remember what happened during the show. And so I've seen that music which is available by reproduction media, records, is concrete, and music which you hear only once is elusive, like in the classical sense of the word. There's another interesting observation which was made by Christian van Burs. He's a, a composer from Berlin. And what he did, he wanted to know how interpretations of Debussy's prelude sounded 100 years ago. So he got uh, one of the first recordings of uh, Debussy's prelude from New York and from uh, Russia, from Moscow, and compared it. And they were completely different. Um, the interpretation from Moscow was just half the speed, differently syncopated, uh, different instrumentation and different arrangement, very different. You couldn't even know that it's the same piece because at that time music basically just uh, consisted in the form of scores or as folk music, collective musical memories. And over the past 100 years, this changed uh, very soon. Nowadays, almost every interpretation of the business prelude sounds the same. So a concrete idea of how this prelude actually sounds was actually only developed in the last 100 years since records exist, which made this um, music concrete. And music which is in records and you hear it often is not elusive anymore, but it's concrete. Now, what does this mean for sampling? Um, for sampling, it actually means that why, why should we sample? Why do people sample? They sample because they want to work with their own musical memories. And there's one problem with sampling, but it is that it's not a spontaneous process. You can't um, work with samples in the way you play the guitar, for instance. And that was the crucial point for me. I wanted to have actually an instrument uh, with which I can play with samples in a way I play with uh, my elusive musical memories on a guitar. That's it, and this technology was made for that. And I think I will show it to you. Okay, where's my mouse pointer? Okay, first, also again, for those who've seen the video, they may already know this example, just to see that it works. It's Michael. Test one, two, three. stuff which wasn't really any use and 
and sort of granules and tastes actually, but for real plug tonics uh, with longer samples and then it's getting more tricky because if you use longer sample, it's getting more and more unlikely that a longer sample really fits to what you say. Anyway, I'll show you the application. It's here. Um, it's very simple and it's very restrictive, but um, it had to be like that so I could develop the software in the first place. Uh, later it will be less restrictive and more flexible, but where's my mouse one? Yeah. Okay. Now we have... So this were like uh, 64 nodes. Thanks. Wop, 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 wop. When, it's, when the samples are getting longer, of course, it's <coughs> getting less likely that it finds a matching sample. Wop, 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 wop. <coughs> These are 30 second samples. 16. Wop, 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 wop. <coughs> okay, still works, but now this like fourth notes, fourth notes. Wop, 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 wop. So, now, but I wanted to work with longer samples, and it took quite a while to get adapted to it. I have to say, I'm not really a good beatboxer, and I'm not a good singer, but after working on the software for quite a while, I just wanted to use it, of course, and if I was shy, I would maybe have thought, no, you can't do this live. <laughs> <laughs> But, I, but I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> so, okay, I'll show you some. Okay, when the, now, okay. Um, you see something, you hear nothing, but it's already working. It's analyzing actually just the crowd level noise. Um, maybe I can have a look. Okay, so we have watch this. I'm using this uh, currently with Ableton Live, but because I was too lazy to make my own patch, that's the reason. Um, all what Ableton Live does is <coughs> having free tracks with 100% uh, feedback. You can look. Oh no, it didn't crash. Well, I'm c currently working on it and I'm trying to make a new version, so sometimes I have bugs. No, it should work. In April, and there were two kids who were coming every day, and they were practicing every day a few hours. and. At the end, at the closing, they were better than me because you know I'm, I have to program it. I have no really time to actually uh, work with it. And then he told me one of the kids, my French is really bad, but I got the basic point. And he told me that his father is doing similar music, but he's sitting on the computer all the time and just watching on the screen and. Um, and that is really stupid because it should always work just with the microphone. And yeah, this guy was Akuden. He has a son that <laughs> really funny. Yeah, he was in Paris at that time. But I knew him already from Montreal. Okay, now. So, what's going on here? <coughs> Um, okay, one more time, I'll try to start <coughs> the instance so you know what's happening. Oh no, it's already there. Great. So, no, it's not there's something I'm moving. Okay, that is good. Like this one.
it's confusing. I usually have two computers. That's my setup. Okay, this are uh, well, as I said, it's done in Ableton Live, but I've made this uh, small patch in PD to show me what's happening on the input side. Um, I have just a microphone. And this microphone, I can change the EQ, it's here, it's an equalizer. And I have this 3D lay lines where I can feed, I can either report to one or to the other. It's basically just a delay with 100% uh, feedback. First, I'll try to get a basic idea of what's going on because I have to sync myself to the sound which is happening, so I make some not very loud noise. Now this was fed to the first delay line, and it takes some short samples. as much as I can. I actually really like noise, but I'm strangely getting to clubs, which was really surprising to me, but that's really spoiling my character sometimes. That's why this is somewhat reasonable. something else, <coughs> what I'm currently working on. This is just an oscillator bank, nothing special. Um, 
Or oh, does somebody maybe try want to try it first with the pop stuff before <laughs> I go to the more to my new idea? I mean, don't be too shy. You know? Okay, well then I will select one of you. So maybe this is really fun, really easy. So who wants to work with right on time? You. You're trying to look away, that's why I choose. <laughs> Scream. <coughs> wow, yeah, you see, it's that easy. And is there somebody here? <laughs> is, is there somebody here who is maybe like a beatboxer or a real singer or something? Nobody? Well, okay, man. Um, yeah. Well, technically, it's really a very conceptual thing. That's the very, very first version which I got working. And of course, I, I used, I'm 30, by the way. So, and all those videos are from around 88 to 91. So when I was 13, uh, part of the MTV generation, of course, this stuff was on TV. And it's my concrete musical memories to get back to the concept. Um, and I couldn't do anything against it, you know, it just happened. Um, I mean, MTV was made to sell Coca-Cola to the kids, and that also worked for me. And, okay, those videos, I can scramble it, I can get rid of my dark ages. They were not so dark, actually, but... <laughs> Just, you know, it needs, it needs to be mentioned why I do this that way. I mean, of course, some of the stuff I really like still. I mean, it's really trashy, really bad stuff, but it has potential. <laughs> when you're in performance, you have the delay also always? Ah, yeah, the delay. Okay, the delay. I always forget about it because I already got adapted to it. But of course, there can't be one sample analyzed, and at the same time when it's analyzed, it knows which one matches best. So there's a latent, I mean it works in real time, but there's a latency of at least the length of the sample you've chosen. Now, um, to, to deal with that, I've just uh, made the latency even longer, and now it's exactly one bar, actually just 4-4. Four, four. And so it's very easy, you know, it's, I just have to think ahead, exactly one bar, 4-4, four, four. And that's something which is really easy. And I've also tried with 3, 4, 5, 4. That was all manageable. I've tried 17, 13. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty hard. But for, for good drummers, even that shouldn't be a problem. Well, I have ideas how I can get it uh, working really real time. Where like I have like a neural network which learns what I input, so it's a limited set of stuff. And then just with the onset, it already guesses what comes next. Then it plays uh, the appropriate sample. And if then really comes what it first thought it will come, it just plays the sample. And if it changes too much, it just breaks and guesses another sample. But that's, you know, it's, I mean, I'm not a math head. I've studied philosophy, so. <laughs> um, neural networks, all that stuff. And the main problem with that, you, you won't get it uh, working in real time. And that's currently also uh, the main thing, that it's working in real time. Uh, also the pitch detection. Maybe some people here who tried to work on uh, pitch detection. Monophonic is easy, but polyphonic pitch detection, like finding the right chords, it's really rocket science. And I have some stuff which is working but not in real time. And so my laptop is currently the reference for what I implement because I want to use it. If I can't use it on my laptop, then I don't need it. Mm -hmm. So, but I have to get it working. It's probably May I ask how, how, how long are you working with PD? Mm -hmm. uh, two years. Yeah. Sometimes I really hate it, PD, by the way. I mean, it's, but it's still the best. So, okay. You did Max first, huh? Oh, Max really sucks. But I mean, those fights were already fought on the Max and the PD list, like, you know, over the last couple of years. No, as you, as you said, you studied uh, philosophy. And, uh, yeah. I was curious to know how, how long are you in it, because it doesn't count with your 
education? Oh, well, I've, uh, I've programmed uh, demos on Amiga 15 years ago. Yeah. So, but I don't consider myself a nerd. And actually, most of the stuff I do, I before I start, I know how it works. And then it's just work all the time, working, 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 mm -hmm. even though I know how it has to be. And I really hate that. I don't enjoy it. Mm -hmm. But if I have good reasons, like in this case, where I also have a conceptual background, where I know, okay, I really have to do it, then I do it. So now, there's a, I have a technical, but also philosophical question. Um, yeah. what, how do you deal with the feedback of the output uh, that probably controls your yeah. sounds as well? Well, um, it's... Because it could, if yeah, you yeah. hold the microphone to the speaker, it will play itself, right? No, it doesn't really feedback the way uh, usually feedback would happen. Uh, the way, the problem, the usual feedback is, I have, like, let's say, a scene of one kilohertz, which is fed back, fed back again, and it's really um, adding up. But it's, of course, finding a different sample, so it's not really... Um, What's the word? Um, Interference. Yeah. yeah, it's not really resonating. Mm -hmm. So I actually sometimes um, when when I'm in a club and it's really loud, yeah. I have to take that into account. So if I want to, I have to be louder so I can take down the microphone, mm -hmm. and I can't make those. Actually, I like like because I can do this very controlled, very tight. And to do it loud, I have trouble doing it because, as I said, I'm a terrible singer. Terrible. But, but mm -hmm. does the system play itself if you leave it loud? You have the delay yeah. as well. Can you get well, yeah. Is it interesting? I mean, so you could use it. Yeah. yeah. There's a lot of possibilities. Let me first show you what I'm currently working on. Or let's say I'm not really working on it. I'm thinking about it. And for that, I have this oscillator bank here. Which I'll show you. Let's see. and 
standing like this and moving very slowly, maybe just two meters over half an hour. It's really hard. <laughs> it's really, really hard. So it's uh, but very interesting because you stay like this and you can't hold it anymore. Then the sound starts flickering. And yeah, with a big projection, so the video is very hectic, but I'm very slow. And with the sensors, um, the pitch will be controlled. And I'll have a microphone, one like that, I don't know what it's called like. And with that, I will make just a spectral, like, a, yeah, I mean, if it's lots of, uh, if it's very high or very dark or, yeah. Yeah, that's basically it, so maybe. I have some questions. What do you control with your microphone? Well, the sound. But again, the, the samples that are chosen. Or yeah, something. like, I mean, maybe maybe if more people want to know more about the technical stuff, then I can say. No, no, I was only wondering. No, it's just, you know, it's like I'm, yeah, yeah, I have, uh, I take sound, yeah. and it's, um, split up into small snippets and for each snippet it's a sound signature is calculated using psychoacoustic techniques like bark scale, auto ear simulation, simultaneous masking, lots of complicated stuff. I don't really understand it myself but somehow I've made it to implement it. And so for each uh, snippet I get some numbers which describe how it sounds and those signatures saved in database and then I can input the sound in real time with the microphone, which is again split up into snippets and for each snippet the sound signature is calculated and then it finds the most matching sound signature in the database and plays the accordance So the microphone input is analyzed live mm -hmm. and, and uh, uh, clips are pre-analyzed. Yeah, clips are pre-analyzed. Mm -hmm. What, uh, what kind of compression do you use in the audio and the video? Uh, there's no compression. The, I mean, the, the, the audio is just wave files and they are just read from hard disk. And the video is, I mean, this is, the video here is really crappy because it's just 160 by 120 pixels. So it can get it in real time on this laptop, but usually I have. For performance, I have a second computer, which plays just video. Mm -hmm. So, because this works a bit, but for performance, it's too risky. Sometimes it freezes up. And, yeah. and is a piece always connected to a certain video, like video and sound material? It comes together. Like in this case, this really is for the Karayan video. You wouldn't like put Michael Jackson underneath mm -hmm. instead for fun. No. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also, of course, it's a. Uh, well, I didn't mention it, but it's also a bit of experiment in uh, synesthetic experience, where, like, you know about synesthesia? Not much. Well, anyway, it's some theory which tries to figure out how is sound connected to media, how do we understand it. It actually comes from this uh, psychology thing where people have really see colors when they hear sound, and media theory and, and literature also they're like trying to find out when a picture really fits to a sound and if it, if it really does then that, that's called a synesthetic experience and my theory here is that synesthetic experience is nothing fundamental but it's learned through the media for instance and that's very interesting also with this um, music videos where like people of my age and less have never a problem to understand what's going on. They see, okay, yeah, that's the sound, and it's the video, and it's cut the same way, because the cuts are uh, synchronous. But um, other people sometimes see this link because they were already too old when MTV came, and they've maybe seen music videos, but already with an analytical viewpoint. You know, and so this is an experiment. Mm -hmm. I'm just taking the whole videos. So it's very simple, you know, and it's a bit, of course, um, I mean, okay, it's a bit of a kill the VJ attitude because I don't like VJ. I mean, there are very few VJs who are really good, and so I say, okay, 
than I do it myself. <laughs> I have to stop there which plays the sample so I can also play the video. It's already included in the package. <laughs> how, how, how long is your uh, live performance? It depends. Um, I mean, the live performance is really, when I'm performing live, I'm also trying to be a bit of an entertainer. So I adapt a little to the audience. If the audience is really bad, okay, I can't do anything good anyway. But if the audience is really good and they really like it, I play longer. If it's really bad audience, then I've stopped after half an hour. So usually between half an hour and an hour. The longest time I've played was, I think, 18 minutes. This was at the noise festival. <laughs> and where, and that, there I really did just noise. Yeah. It was like, I thought, <laughs> how can they like this? <laughs> but they did like it, so <laughs> it was great fun for me. But when you, when you get your sound, you get the most accurate, at uh, 64s or 32s. Yeah. Uh, then you, uh, uh, you cause so, so many jokes in the picture yeah. that it's unbearable for the audience to stand. Than well, yeah, I had some, I had two epileptic seizures already. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it really depends on, you know. There, I mean, there are people who are into acid and there are people who are not. You know, it's the same as Campbell Hex. You know, I mean, yeah, some people like it, some people don't. You're maybe one of those who don't like it. No, I mean, uh, if, you, if, you, if you make picture cosier, then you reduce the sound quality or accuracy of, of a, a sample uh, uh, equating that takes place. Uh, well, actually, I don't really think about it that much. But it was, uh, as I said, concrete poetry. So, I mean, the optimal case is that it's really stream of consciousness. And then I really don't care if, you know, who, who doesn't like it can go. I mean, if too many, too many people go, you know, that's a clear sign that the audience is not good. And in those cases, I play not that long anyway. So it's very systemic. <laughs> what do you think? Probably you've been playing around with this for a long time. Have you ever tried feeding uh, one uh, audio track of a music video into, uh, into the scrambled hacks and using the other resulting track? And yeah, yeah, yeah. that turn out? I've tried with lots of stuff. I've like a Britney that. Spears interpretation on some Michael Jackson song. Or yeah, it doesn't really work that way. Really because, I mean, it's really very unlikely that you find any samples who match. Mm -hmm. And if the input audio is not controlled, so the audio output is um, very likely to sound quite <coughs> random. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. What I've tried was. Um, now I don't have the name. You know the guy where, I mean, MC Hammer sampled Ricky. Ricky. Yeah. And I took that and I fed it with MC Hammer. And this was really interesting. <laughs> no, but then there already I know, of course, this stuff is related. Or well, I've taken uh, the, the gray album from DJ Danger Mouse and I fed it with the white album from the Beatles. And so this was really interesting stuff happening there. But I mean, the program is not intelligent. You know, I, I, I didn't try to because I, I've, I was researching lots of you know, artificial intelligence stuff, and I know computers are not intelligent. And I don't want to work the next 10 years to try to make it happen anyway. So I really rely on to myself. That's the interesting thing. You know, I have to provide something so it works. It's an instrument which needs to uh, be learned. Also. I, I got one more question. Yeah. Is, there, is there a size of your database that could exceed uh, the capacity of your uh, hardware software to, to uh, look for uh, exact match in real time? Yeah, the maximum size is one terabyte, probably. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, of course, well, I didn't know there are always limits. But, um, but it's, it's much. It's much. Yeah, it's. Uh, 2 to the power of 32 divided by something I forgot, but anyway, it's big enough. <laughs> and you know, it's no problem to make it bigger. Um, the size is not a problem actually, it's more like the matching quality which needs to be equalized. Some more? Yeah. Uh, so, just uh, said that uh, you showed your video as well that you uh, split the 
like the, the gates up into uh, 146 now or something? Uh, from it? from a quarter to one 128. Okay. Because so I also do sub matching, so each sample is split a bit more to have dynamics for each. I mean, each 16 is split up actually into four sub segments, so I have some dynamics inside of the 16. And when you when you perform, uh, is it like you, you uh, uh, how do you say, uh, jump between these like uh, splits? Or I don't know. Ah, yeah, saying, okay. Do you always use the same? Uh, no, no. Um, well, yeah, yeah it's, I could show that what I'm actually doing. Yeah, you showed it here, but I didn't read it. Yeah, okay, I take <laughs> trying to find ways to get away from the screen. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm experimenting with lots of different things. But yeah, it's, did you like the sound? You know, mm -hmm. really rough. Yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> that I would like to actually have a panel maybe later this evening or at some other time discussing the, these very fascinating issues of intellectual property, of collective memory, and also about how industrialization and capitalism have affected our music. Of course, first our music was highly industrialized with the invention of the printing press and the invention of notation, Western musical notation. At this time, music became fixed in the notes, this is when the creator-performer split began. A kind of it began a kind of schizophrenic split in the musical community that only gets deeper and deeper. And uh, of course, it became even more absurd with the invention of recording. First, the brown wax disc, which melted, and then the vinyl record, which broke, and now digital music which is intangible, impossible to own. It has broken free, in some sense, from capitalism and from the ossification, which I don't know if you know this English word, but it means bones. Turned, when, 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 we have, when we imprison sound waves, or actually parts of sound waves, since we're only getting fragments of a sound wave, when we imprison music on a discrete object, a material object, it is a highly artificial situation. It means that then we have an owner. And so uh, I think this was a great booking because I deal with synesthesia in my musical inventions. Uh, and I also deal very much with a type of musique concrète, which we know was a phrase thought up by Marais. And so uh, that brings us to my invention, a wearable computer, the sneakers of Samothrace. Here you see my Max patch. I'm still working in Max. Uh, I wouldn't work in PD if you cut, you know, cut up my head. Uh, I'm not work in PD. I, uh, I rather like Max, and especially now with Max 4.5. Uh, of course, we know that this is the Max is the sexy front end of C++. And what's extraordinary about Max 4.5 is that for the first time you can run both jitter. Yes, you have a question? No. You, yes, but you went like this with the other What was that? We'll talk, we'll get to it later. <laughs> uh, 
This means for the first time you can run jitter, you can have a jitter patch and a max patch open at the same time. And so you're going to see what I do with that. But since you don't know who I am, once again, Phoebe Legere. That's a French Canadian name. French Canadians are almost exactly like French people, except uh, we're North American. Um, and so uh, there are a lot of great things that go with uh, being North American, with all the vulgarity that we bring to uh, being North Americans. Uh, one of the things that I have that's a little different is that I am very large part Native American. I bleach my hair, that's why. My hair is long, uh, straight black hair. So um, if you look at me, you can probably see the Indian in me. And I use a lot of my French Canadianness, and I use a lot of my Indian uh, music and cultural background in my inventions. Um, because this, this, this background gives me great strength that I don't think I would have for just being a white, white person. Okay, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I began in music. I started before age three, and I started playing the piano. This, was, this is still my main instrument. I go to Juilliard now. I teach at Juilliard, and I'm getting my doctorate in straight ahead music composition. Uh, but I, I love the piano. This is not a piano. I love an acoustic piano, but it had certain limitations. And just to give you a sense of, you're going to see me play my sneakers, but just to give you a sense of uh, another side of me, I thought I'd just sort of touch this piano. I love, I love piano. This is a poor Gab one. And, uh, oh yeah. So uh, I invented this. I invented this instrument, the sneakers of Samothrace. It in fact could have been put in any any kind of shoe. In fact, I saw some wooden shoes today, and I thought that's what we really need is the uh, musical wooden shoes. But I, I thought you'd think I was like playing up to you too much. So, uh, but I think that's going to be coming. It may have to be done in the wood shop though, because the sensors will have to be embedded in the wood. Okay, I'm going to take these off. Um, these are phallic signifiers, by the way. If those of you who read Lacan. <laughs> Um, so we'll get rid of these, and we'll go to the uh, highly iconic American uh, athletic foot footwear. <laughs> and uh, this is a sort of a commentary on the absurdity of uh, of American culture, and yet also a, a wonderful, wonderful fun. Oh yeah, I was going to play the piano, wasn't I? Okay, so so you have, once you once you have the once you have the sneakers on, you got to start playing. So. So um, yeah, I'll just show you a little. Uh, I started in classical music, but quickly went to jazz. I studied with John Lewis of the Modern Jazz Quartet, and uh, the thing I love about jazz is that I love improvisation. And so. Um, <laughs> Harmony uh, moves around. It's quite gripping. Um, I, I, I got involved in the New York, the downtown New York performance scene. I don't know if you're aware of downtown improvisers. I know that Anne is. We have some friends in common. I'm involved with a foundation called the Roulette Organization, which is all about noisy, experimental, and adventurous music. And I have a TV show, which is called Roulette TV, which is about the extreme cutting edge of music and art. So through being the host of Roulette TV, I met people like Letitia Sonami, who I think did a residency here. She invented something called the Ladies' Glove. And uh, I had Elliot Sharp on my show and Pauline Oliveros and the best of the best, the smartest of the smartest. It's the complete, it is the total opposite of American television. I have smart people talking about really interesting things. So. Uh, I got involved in the experimental music scene and also a lot of performance art. I did my thesis at Vassar in performance art. And I found that the more I played uh, in interesting alternative spaces, well, something has just happened. I actually touched a button. Hold on one second. Let's see if I can get this back to where it should be. 
We may have to turn it off and on. Okay, hold on. One of those. What is this? Oh, we'll just use it. We'll just use it. And that's good too. Uh, what is this instrument? This is, of course, uh, an accordion. <laughs> Away with normal harmony. piano, which is one ton of technology, and you're rooted to the spot when you play the piano. But with the accordion, you can move around, and people can smell you, your pheromones. You know what those are? You know. And you can look people in the face, and you can hear them thinking. It's wonderful. And another thing about having an instrument that moves around with you is that you're experiencing sound in a space as you move, the waves are coming back to your ears in a different way. There's all kinds of flanging. Now, I don't have to play the accordion that way, in the tonal way. I don't have to play you like that with those European, those gypsy scales. I don't have to <laughs> manipulate your emotions that way. I can also play it like this, quite interesting. A minor second music student. So I play a lot of instruments. I'm interested in them. I love them. I love these. Uh, I love these instruments handed down to us from our parents. My grandfather spoke French and played the accordion. But uh, my whole life has been an attempt to uh, grow artistically, and so um, growth comes sometimes from very unexpected places. I started to, because I don't have children of my own, uh, I, I sought an experience with children and I began to volunteer for dis severely disabled and retarded children, autistic children, uh, because uh, they couldn't reject me. <laughs> and uh, in fact, I ended up learning so much from them. And one thing that I found out about them and I'm sure you know this if you've worked with the retarded or the autistic. Uh, they love music. They love music. And it's very healing for them. And I felt like some of them, you know, you, you come in one day and somebody's legs have been cut off and they've got an arm that's, you know, sort of withered. And, and, and I realized they were never going to be able to play the piano like me. They were never going to be able to hold a 30-pound MIDI accordion and walk around with it and and make jokes the way I do, but they love music and they have a right to play music. So I thought, well, what can I do? So I got the idea of a wheelchair accessible keyboard. Okay, not the greatest idea in the world, but it drove me to uh, learn electronics. And this was totally different for me because I'm a real artist artist. I'm not like 
an engineer type person. I'm not like, uh, which side of the brain is it where you can like uh, make the right choices, be practical and do your taxes and all that stuff. I don't have anything on that side. My stuff is all concentrated on the creative side. So I had to learn electronics. I really, and it was fascinating to me, learning about electricity, which is running the whole show. I never knew what was coming out of the wall. I mean, I never knew there were the trillions of these electrons, these like fuzzy little balls. They're like streaming out like of the wall. And they're like our slave. Electricity is like our slave. And uh, so I thought, okay, that's good. And I and so I learned electricity. I became the uh, artist in residence at the School of Visual Arts. And that, of course, led to no signal. All right, that, that led to the sneakers of Samothrace. Okay, you ready? So, uh, I got a Max badge here. You know, we really need like a stage and a spotlight. Okay, I won't complain. I won't complain. I'm glad to be here. Uh, here is, uh, here is, I will let you take a look at my Max badge for 10 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Now, no, you can look under the hood. All you have to do, no, no, just be nice to me. You can look at anything you want. All right. Now, are you ready? Oh, first of all, you know, I have improvised with some of the great electronic musicians. Uh, Ikoi Morier is on this record, Blue Curtain, all the Einstein label. Obviously, the only label that would ever put out my music, and uh, and, and, sh and 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 so I, I have learned from the best. But this is all mine, and these are the secrets of Sabbath race. And so I'm going to show you some different things that can be done with them. They are very much in process, and uh, I've got big ideas for the future. Of course, number one would to make them a standalone. Uh, you notice my circuit is in a Tupperware, and. Um, you ready? Ready, maestro. Yes. Okay, and my my phone? Let's have a lot of reverb because you know we may need that. Ha ha. Okay, so first of all, I'll just give you some give you a good meat and potatoes. A uh, quick time and a sine wave. Okay. Uh oh. Well, we're getting a sample coming up. I think it was on too long. Okay. I think we need more volume. Are we getting volume? Yes. I don't hear volume. 